So on this motor, you can see that I am 11 thou out. And what I did was I ran this indicator around. I found my lowest number. So it was like negative something up here. And I zeroed it at that point. I pushed a zero on my dial to get it to zero where it's at the lowest point. Then I ran it around again and 11 thou is my high point. So now that I know my high point, I'm not gonna like go through all the process of doing these this indexing because I've done this so many times. There's many other videos I have on YouTube of this. Um, so you can look at some of the other videos if you wanna go from the beginning. But basically you just, you clean up the block, you put your bell on here with as many bolts as you can get in, you put your index plate on, you put your dial on, you spin the crank around, get your offset. And then you wanna kind of mark on here where your high is. So I'm like almost straight up and down, 11th thou out. Then you can go out to my website and you can look up the dial size you need. So in this case, I'm gonna be using these uh, 0.004 offsets. So what you wanna do when you're looking at offset dowels is choose one that is half the size or as close to half the size as that. So 0.004 times two is 0.008. So that's gonna get me to about three thou out on this motor. So I'm gonna open these up and show you a little bit about these. So these are my new offset dowels and you can see here um, that they're a lot heavier duty than the other manufacturers out there that make these. And they have a flathead slot in there so you can put them in the block and then spin them with a flathead screwdriver and get them indexed in the direction you want. So now on these dowels, there's a high side and a low side and this is only four thou so it's like two sheets of paper thickness, so you can't really see it. But what I recommend doing is using your fingernail, finding the high side, which is here on this one, and it will be in line with one of the screwdriver slots. So this is my high side. So I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm gonna mark my high side so I can see that in the car. I'm gonna do this better once I don't have to hold the camera. But basically, I'm gonna mark my high side on both dowels, and then I know which way um, is pointing towards the high side to get my bell to move in that direction. So I'm gonna put these back um, on the block and we'll go from there. But one thing I do wanna talk about is I, these new dowels, I make them in five different sizes, so lots of variety. 004, 008, uh, 012, and uh, 016 and 20. So uh, five different sizes and I make these for the 2JZ motors, the Toyota motors, 10 millimeter. I make them for the rotary in uh, 15 millimeter and then I make them for Hondas in the 14 millimeter size as well. So I have three um, different uh, offset dials now, and I have them for three different motors, and I'll continue to make these as, uh, as they become popular. So excuse my dirty hands, I've been working on this car all day, but um, you can see here the slot, and I have it marked. And then if I put my fingernail here, I can feel that ledge going upward on that side. So that means the high side on the side that's gonna be on the outside, the bell side, is this way so that's going to tell me um you know which way to to point the bell and in this case since i'm straight up and down these are actually going to be spun this way so i'm going to move the bell downward towards my high to try to cut that high number in half if that makes sense so now we come to the realization that we're going to need to do uh offset dowels you can see here them on the 2j motor they're here and here what i recommend is these three things some good penetrating oil and what I recommend is spray that on there and let it sit overnight. Spray it on those dowels, let it sit overnight. Some vice grips to hold those dowels as you try to turn them the next day. And then some map gas if needed. If you can't get them to budge, you can heat up the block. So you'll take your map gas and heat up the block around the outside of the dowel to heat up that material to expand it. And then hopefully you can get your dowel to pull out. Now, I took the flywheel back off so I can get in here easier. So I'm gonna go ahead now and try to uh, remove these dowels with the vice grips. So luckily for me on this one, I didn't need any heat. This one is actually turning. So you wanna like, as I, I can crank it back and forth, and I can feel the dowel moving without a problem. What I'll do is I'll take a flathead screwdriver, stick it up under here in between the pliers and the block, and then I'll put light pressure outward on this as I spin those pliers and it's just gonna work those dowels out nice and easy. Whew, okay, that was a workout. There you can see I got one down and one to go. So on these uh, 20 and 30 year old motors, you know, these things can be a real treat to get out sometimes. So hopefully um, with, if you soak them overnight, you'll find it just as easy as mine are to get out here now.
Okay, that second one came out like butter. So I highly recommend this stuff if you don't, if you never used it before. It's called Aerocroil. Really, really good penetrating oil. Uh, I use this on all these dowels every time and on 8.8 .8 rears and all kinds of stuff there where the, the pinion nuts get stuck on and let it sit overnight and the next morning, man, stuff breaks off so easy. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get the offset dowels in place here and show you how I'm gonna set them up. So here you can see my offset dowel pins installed and you can see my marks are pointing down and I have them slightly off from directly straight down because my line of outness was about like five o'clock, 5.30ish. So I want my line of both my dowels to be parallel pointing down uh, just a little bit off center. So you can see here, I can just spin these with my fingers. You could use a screwdriver too if you needed to, but so that's how I want them. So what you wanna do, if, you're, if your bell is high down here, you wanna move your bell down towards that to get your center lined up, all right? So you wanna try to get that that base circle moved down so you get back into the center of your off. If it's this, this was a mind fuck to me the first time I ever did this. So if you get like um, frustrated with this and don't understand it, if you just follow what I'm saying here and do it this way, you know, put your, um, your high side of your dowels pointing down towards your high number, it'll work out for you. All right, so now that the dowel pins are in and ready to go, I put the flywheel back on, that's gonna help me re-index here again. So uh, the flywheel is needed to install the dial indicator onto. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bell housing back on and run the indicator around it again. And we're gonna see how much it moved with those uh, four offset pins. Okay, so here's my result. I'm now three thou with on center and it moved it down just like I thought it would. So it moved it eight out of 11, which is like right on the money. Usually you get a variance there, you know, either a thou or two, but this time it worked out perfectly. It moved it eight thou down from 11. So now we're three out. So zero's up here when I run it around and three down low. So now performance spec for a motor, um, for a high performance motor, you wanna be within five thou or less. So basically as long as you're five thou or less, you're good uh, on your indexing. And uh, what's bad is if you're, if you're out of index, what can happen is it basically puts the input shaft on an angle going into your motor, into your pilot bearing, and then that puts stress on the back side or the front side of the gear and can wear the gear out on the back, put too much heat in the back of the gear. Uh, it can also wear out the input bearing um, and it can make a lot more noise. So you can see here, even with one of my cast aluminum bells, I now always index these. We found that they've been, there's been more tolerance differences in the 2J motors and the Toyota blocks. So this was a bone stock motor right here. And uh, with my bell, even though my bell is machined to within two thou, uh, the Toyota blocks have variances between all of them. And this one was out about 11 thou. But we fixed that with some offset dowels and now we're good to go. You can find those offset dowels on my website, granisracing.com. Search for 2JZ dowel and you'll find it. So this is a lot of off on on off stuff until you get it all uh, proper and ready to go. And now I'm at that point. So I have to pull the bell back off, install the clutch. And in this case, I have a Tilton ST246 clutch, which is a twin plate clutch and it's good for up to a thousand horsepower. And then there's an HD version of it also that's good up to like 1600 horsepower. So it's a really nice clutch, it drives amazing um, for its power capability. It drives almost like a stock clutch, very cool clutch. Um, more, more information, uh, you can go on my website and search for ST246. But now that I got this done, I'm gonna go ahead and put the clutch on, put the bell back on, and then do my final install of the transmission. So one thing I forgot to mention is the indicator parts and the, this tool, you can get it um, Harbor Freight. It's about 40 bucks for all that setup right there with the magnetic base and the indicator. And then the uh, index plate you can find on my website. If you just go on granisracing.com and search for index plate, you'll find it. And then of course my bell is also available uh, on the website or you can find it with any of my transmission kits as well. So that's it as far as what you need to get the job done. And I hope you have good luck with it.